You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. This episode is brought to you by Hyperice, the leader in advanced warm-up and recovery technology. They have tons of innovative products, like Venom heated wearables to help soothe sore back muscles, Normatec compression boots to speed up recovery and increase circulation, and Hypervolt massage guns to improve mobility. Loved by athletes like Naomi Osaka and Erling Holland. Try them yourself. Get 10% off your order with the code MOVE at hyperrice.com. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Packernet Podcast. I am your host and resident panelist, as always, Ryan Flip. Check us out online, packernet.com. Find me on Twitter, pack underscore that am. Well, I do apologize for uh, not getting you the podcast yesterday. As I mentioned on social media, um, I ripped through about 10 minutes, and I was going through all my notes, and I took very studious notes about uh, all the different teams. I went in-depth into all the different stats, um, and as I was just reading them, I realized this isn't interesting. It just isn't. You know, uh, Titans are 5-6 and six when at home for, you know, the last three years, which, you know, is a thing that might interest you. I, I, I don't know. You know, I mean, it's, it's true, but it just, it just got to the point where, I don't know. And so every once in a while you come across something that, that is relevant, but a lot of the time it's just, it's just information and it's really not that interesting. And so I got to kind of work that out a little bit better. So. I just, I, I, I literally went through notes on one game and I'm like, I'm not doing the rest of these. I can't physically do it. I will make myself ill. This is so boring. But uh, it was a very good day today. Today is still Sunday for me. Um, had a kind of a group birthday party. All my kids' birthdays are kind of clumped together. All of us, actually. The whole family kind of starts in August and runs through December. Got one in August, one in September, one in October, two in November, one in December, something like that. Yeah, that would be six. But um, pretty big game today because, well, I mean, <laughs> today was sort of a get-right day for, for a lot of teams. And even though, you know, some of the teams didn't win. I mean, the Vikings did fall to 0-2, but I still feel like it was somewhat of a get-right game. The defense was pathetic. I, and, and listen, I, I shouldn't use words like that because I didn't watch it. I was busy tending to a party and doing all this stuff. Um, maybe just... Arizona's offense is just that good. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Your defense isn't that good if you give up 34 points. But for the most part, there was a lot of get right type stuff. Washington and the Giants, you know, I mean, it's it's in in the division, but even so, 29 to 30, a lot of close games for the most part. But, you know, if you're Washington, you win that game by a point, you're kind of back to one and one. The Giants fall to 0 and 2, but, you know, you, we kind of gave her a little bit, you know? Maybe feel a little bit good about it. I don't know. Miami feels like garbage. I mean, I never really understand understood the hype about Miami. You know, they got the coaching staff, and then we poached a bunch of uh, New England players, and then we drafted two, uh, I don't know, 35 nothing though. But you want to talk about get right. Buffalo Bills are feeling pretty good. Um, they fell to the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think Baltimore, or excuse me, Buffalo had a very Green Bay Packers experience. I felt that Pittsburgh won that game, and Pittsburgh's way overhyped, just like New Orleans is way overhyped. I thought Pittsburgh was bad. I mean, they've got a good defense. That's the one thing that's different about them and the Saints. But their offense is putrid. Their offense is disgustingly bad. And Buffalo fell apart and let them win. And they should that shouldn't have happened. But they come back and play Miami and beat them 35 to nothing. So if you're the Buffalo Bills, you're looking at that going, all right, we had a bad week. It was a really good offense. It's week one. We're back on track. And we're on the war path right now. That's what the Packers need. That's that's really what the Packers need. And it's it's also a divisional game, right? They're beating up on little brother. Pittsburgh, you know, it's not necessarily get right, but I feel like they're kind of where they need to be. Falling to the Raiders and beating Buffalo makes a lot of sense for Pittsburgh. I think Pittsburgh is kind of like how I feel about the Raiders, who, by the way, are 2-0 and right now. But I feel like Pittsburgh is a kind of team with that defense they can beat about anybody, like Buffalo, but they could also lose to anybody because their offense is so bad. The Raiders are 2-0, and but that's not going to stand. I mean, you know, they're not really a team... I do like the Raiders. I've been saying they're a team that can kind of step it up, but their defense is still just not, you know, I don't know. I don't trust it. 
San Francisco, I'm feeling pretty good about because they went to 2-0, and but they almost lost to Philly. And Philly is 1-1 and because they were way overhyped week one, and now they just got spanked. I mean, not really spanked, but they only scored 11 points. And so that's one of those games where nobody should feel good about it. Uh, Saints-Carolina. I mean, I told you the Saints weren't good, right? <laughs> I mean, I did say that. I, 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 I'm one, I really wonder. I wish, again, I wish I had that magic machine that would just answer all my questions, no matter what the, what the uh, question is. I would love to ask the machine, how many people out there were waiting for the Saints to beat Carolina 35 to nothing so that they could send me a nasty gram about, oh, I thought you said the Saints were really good. They're sure to do good. Didn't happen that way, did it? No, because the Saints aren't good, and I tried to tell you that. Carolina goes to 2-0. and If you want to play the game, that oh, no, Carolina is just that good. Dude, come on, man. <sighs> you're right. You're right. But that still puts us, you know, we got Aaron Rodgers. They have Sam Darnold. So, yeah, okay. New England won one, but it was the Jets, so who cares? Uh, Denver goes to 2-0. and They're beating up on trash teams. Jaguars fall to 0-2. They're, they're so bad. Uh, Cleveland nearly lost to the Texans. I know they had a 10-point win, but that was that was pretty ugly. They did go to 1-1, one and one, which is great. The Texans got to feel pretty good about where they're at. I mean, they, they almost went 2-0 and oh for a minute there. The Bears got their win. Um, congratulations to the Bears. But um, I said get right. I think the better way to say this is everything kind of just comes to the middle. You know, there's, there was a, a decent amount to get right. But a lot of this is you look at this and it's like, all right, who is like the, the super dominant scary team. I mean, we're, Kansas City's going on right now, 14-7, six minutes uh, into the first, and Kansas City has it. Maybe Kansas City's a super scary team, but you look at this, and it's like, there's a lot of question marks, and some of these teams maybe still are just getting in their groove, like Buffalo, et cetera, et cetera, but um, there's a lot of, you know, even when you win the game, it's like, this wasn't great. If you're Cleveland, again, you're not feeling good about this. You know, a nail-biter against the Texans, that kind of sucks. The Bears, I mean, Listen, a win's a win, and you got to be happy about it. And technically, it was Justin Fields that got you that win. But also, technically, it was Justin Fields that almost lost you the game because Andy Dalton looked like he had this thing under control. Justin Fields comes in, and um, things devolved rapidly. And then you had the game won. I mean, it was basically game over. I was ready to turn the TV off. One of the few things I actually watched was I turned the game on for a minute at the end. And Justin Fields comes out, throws a pick, and the, and the Bengals are right back in the game, score a touchdown. And again, just like the preseason, the only thing this guy does is runs. The only time I really watch him with the exception of like two throws and everybody cheers and gets excited is when he takes off and runs. And if you're a Bears fan and you're cheering for that, I I would put my head in my hands every time he does that because at some point he's got to be a quarterback. And when all his good plays are when he scrambles and gets away from stuff, which by the way, terrible tackle, that could have been, that was the Bengals chance to win that game. But look, despite the Vikings getting beat by the Bengals, Bengals are not a great team. Kudos to them for kind of getting their offense rolling, and it's looking like things are kind of getting back on track. Maybe they can be, I mean, they should be better than last year, but I don't know. I'm not trying to be too much of a homer and say, well, it doesn't count. You know, the Bears win is trash, whatever. A win's a win. Congratulations. But you can't feel good about what you saw from Justin Fields, can you? Andy Dalton, who, again, let, let me remind you, last year with Dallas, one of the worst quarterbacks in football. Terrible. He was 9 of 11, 56 yards and a touchdown against the Bengals. Justin Fields was 6 of 13, which is less than 50%, which is horrible. Very rarely do you see that. Uh, 60 yards, no touchdowns, and a pick. That's a bad day, dude. That's just a bad day. And then on top of that, David Montgomery, you know, you come into this game, and it's like Joe Mixon and David Montgomery, the top two running backs in football after one week, which doesn't mean anything. Uh, He had 20 carries, only 61 yards, 3.1 average. That sucks. Justin Fields, by the way, 3.1 average also. For a quarterback, I mean, Aaron Rodgers gets more than that usually. Justin Fields had more carries than completions. Let's let's also look at that. He nearly had as many carries as attempts. He had um, 10 carries, 13 attempts, only six completions. So again, you win. That's great. A win's a win. Doesn't have to be pretty. All that matters is the W. But again, if 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 what what have you guys been bragging about this whole time? It's not about this year. It's about the future. What is the future? I guess we don't know. I mean, we'll, we'll we'll see what happens. Justin Fields, he'll maybe turn this thing around. But having seen so much of Trubisky over the years, I'm just there has to be something settling in in your brain. There has to be some part of your brain, even though you'll never admit it to me or any Packers fan ever, which is fine. I don't expect you to. 
But there has to be a part of you that's watching this going, is this seriously going to happen again? Is this really going to happen again? Are we honestly going to suffer through another disappointing quarterback? Because all I'm hearing and seeing prior to this game is, oh, man, he's making some great plays in, in training camp. He's making some great plays in practice. Everything's great. But when he gets out on the field, it's not quite as good. But he runs and he gets a couple first downs and technically you won the game because a guy can't tackle and he got out of that and got a first down and then you took a knee and you won the game. Great, great job. And hey, if the Packers lose, um, it's you and the Viking and uh, you and the Lions in first place. So uh, that'll be great. The other, the other side of the coin, and it's it's kind of iffy. And and again, I'll let the Bears fans decide how they want to fall on this. The defense, the Bengals offense couldn't do anything for a very long time. Now maybe it's because the Bengals are trash. I don't know. But it's still impressive coming from a being a Packers fan where it really doesn't matter how bad the team is. They're going to get a bunch of first downs. They're going to score points. It's also very frustrating as a Packer fan because I know, and Bears fans know also, the weaknesses. They, they'll, they know full well they don't have corners. But there were still no completions against these corners. Why? Because they have a competent defensive coordinator. And guess what? It's his first time on the job here. It's his first year as well. We have guys. We have Jair. We have Amos. We have Savage. We have, we have guys. And we still can't get stuff done because whatever. However, there are some concerning things for the Bears, specifically Khalil Mack. All I heard from the announcers all day long was, where's Khalil Mack? Where's Khalil Mack? We haven't seen him. He hasn't done anything. He had zero pressures in the last game. Now, he did end up with a sack uh, in this particular game, but, you know, and, and his pressure rate was fine last year, and he's still better than your average bear, but <laughs> two levels, you know. Anyways, but if this is going to be Monsters of the Midway, um, you got to have better than that. What did Akeem Hicks do, right? So... Um, at the end of the day, you can have a decent enough scheme and you can have a couple players here and there, but if you're talking about long-term success, even if Justin Fields turns this around, so what? What's going to happen when you go up against, fine, Aaron Rodgers, what happens when you go up against, uh, Tom Brady, who's going to play until he's 72? You know he's going to just pick you guys apart, and there's no way your offense is keeping up. The Chiefs, the Ravens, on and on and on and on and on. So again, Celebrate the victory all you want, but at the end of the day, there has to be a point when you look at this and say, this is not good enough. Because I'm guessing you already know that this is probably not going to be a Super Bowl year. So what you're looking for is, in the future, we're going to be a really good team, but it takes more than just a quarterback. What is the rest of your team? Justin Fields is, uh, is the next, what, Russell Wilson. Okay, cool. So what? Russell Wilson got one Super Bowl, and it was when they had the Legion of Boom as well as a bunch of other players on offense. They had talent everywhere. That was the only time he got it. And he also had talent all over the place and still didn't get it a bunch of times. You and Nagy just going to ride off into the sunset? How's this going to, how does this work? As the defense continues to erode, the offensive line continues to erode. No corners, nothing. I'm just, I'm just wondering. So again, um, it's one of those things where you hate to see the Bears win, but, um, the biggest fear I have is, is watching Justin Fields come onto the, onto the field and just shred. Just shred. I mean, he's, he can take off and run. He's dancing in the pocket, and then he finds a guy, and he's throwing off his back foot 40 yards right in the pocket. There's none of that. Maybe there was one or two, I'd, and I missed it because I was tending to other things. There's probably a highlight out there somewhere. But, I mean, we've seen Pat Mahomes do it. We've seen Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady and Christian Kirk has got a few. I mean... Heck, Kirk Cousins has got a few. Lamar's a playmaker. Josh Allen. A lot of good quarterbacks out there. A lot of guys that can make plays. Justin Fields has got to be that guy at some point, and so far he's just not that guy. Six of 13, 60 yards and a pick. Yikes. Uh, Rams, you know, again, they're 2-0, and and that's cool. They play two teams that are not great, and they, they nearly lost to the Colts. And, and by the way, I think the only reason they won that game is because the quarterback of the Colts went out. They were losing. If I'm not mistaken, they were losing. And Carson Wentz went out. And the Rams came back and squeaked one out. So, you know, I mean, it's still early. Maybe they still haven't hit their stride. But, I mean, if this is, again, if you're bragging about 2-0 and as a Rams fan, I mean, you, you're, you're thinking awfully short term because long term, that team, I don't know, man. Tampa Bay, Atlanta, I mean, it's just Tampa Bay is just continuing their assault. There was a point where it was close, but that's what the Falcons always do. You watch as the offense kind of makes a 
a gallant effort, and you go, ooh, could it happen? And then the defense crumbles in the most spectacular fashion ever, and it ends 48-25, to and you think to yourself, how could I be so stupid as to think there was a chance? I'm sure it was just me, because I doubt there was a single Falcons fan that was watching that going, we're going to win this game. So um, the Buccaneers are off. They're just off and running. They're they're on the warpath. They're ready. They're up, and, you know, I don't know. It's It's annoying. I'm so, I'm, I'm tired, it's to the point I'm tired of, of saying how tired of Tom Brady I am. I'm bored of saying I'm bored of him. It's just stupid. Um, Dallas and the Chargers, another very, very good game. Came down to the wire, Dallas kicked like a 56-yard field goal or something crazy. But, um, you know, again, if you're, if you're Dallas, you're one and one, you feel good about a win. You also lost week one and almost lost to the Chargers in week two. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I'm feeling great about that. If you're the Chargers, you just lost to Dallas. You're not feeling great about that. Tennessee and Seattle was a fantastic game. And you want to talk about get right, Tennessee looked real. It's another playoff contender that looked real bad week one and um, beat up on a 1-0 and playoff contender Seattle Seahawks. And they were down quite a bit, and they marched their way back. Derrick Henry just took over, took the reins. Packers, please pay attention they handed the ball to their workhorse running back, and he smashed them in the mouth over and over and over and over and just beat them into the ground, beat them into submission, and they came back and won the game. I know that's against the rules because we have Aaron Rodgers, and uh, Aaron Godgers must always have the ball all the time, and it's it's basically a, a sin to ever just give it to a running back and run the ball a lot. Even if that's the thing you need to do, we just can't do it because you can't take the ball out of Aaron Rodgers' hands. That's all we ever hear. How do, how could you take the ball out of his hands? How do you take the ball? Out of, don't ever take the ball out of his hands. So we don't. We just throw the ball all the time. But anyways, Tennessee absolutely needed that and uh, got Derrick Henry rolling, and that's how you win. That's how you do that. But of course, the most spectacular game of the day, the Minnesota Vikings fall to 0-2. Very sad I didn't get to watch that game. Looked like a spectacular game um, from start to finish, kind of a lot of back and forth. Um, again, if you're a Vikings fan, you can maybe get excited about that offense if you want. Um, I've always said Arizona's defense isn't great, but obviously they got a couple good pass rushers now, Chandler Jones and J.J. Watt. So I guess you can kind of take that and run with it if you want to and say that we were able to get a bunch of yards, even though the rest of the defensive line, pass rushers, linebackers, corners, and safeties aren't that good. But whatever. Kudos to your offense. Um... Biggest issue, though, Mike Zimmer, defensive guru, brought in a bunch of guys, supposed to be up and running, and you got spanked by the Bengals, and now Arizona hangs 34 points on you. Not only that, once again, game is wrapped up, you win it, and you lose because you missed a field goal. It just It's just absolute poetry, and it, it's it's crazier because, again, not watching the game, I'm kind of monitoring on Twitter and everything, and a couple different people saying things to the effect of, uh, boy, oh boy, has uh, Minnesota maybe found their kicker? Could it be? Could Do they actually have the guy? So he must have just been banging field goals all day long or something. I don't know. Um, but again, I'm just monitoring it on my phone, and I'm, I can see they're easily within field goal range. It was like a chip shot, basically. And um, sure enough, I just see final, and the score didn't change. He missed the field goal, so absolutely glorious. Well done, Vikings. And 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 the biggest thing with the Vikings, it's kind of similar to the Bears, except the Bears are at least kind of at the bottom. They're at the bottom, and they know they're at the bottom, but they're climbing, kind of like the, the Lions. The only question I have for the Bears is, what's, what's the plan to get up? And we'll see how it goes. The Vikings are clinging to the top, and they refuse to rebuild. They refuse. They just keep throwing money at their 32-year-old guys, um, they refuse to let go of Kirk Cousins. They refuse to let go of anybody, and they just keep pushing in, right? We we bring back Everson Griffin. We uh, bring in some defensive tackles to try to shore up this defense because once we get this defense humming, boy, that's when we're going to do it, and we're just we're just going to make one more valiant effort push into this thing because we just refuse to ever tear down and rebuild ever. We're just going to keep going at it. We'll keep paying the same guys until they're forty five. And so the, the biggest issue is there's been a lot of, you know, morale problems with the Vikings. You had a top-tier wide receiver who forced himself off the team. You've got a head coach that just hates everybody. He's very adamant and open about the fact that he hates his quarterback. <laughs> so 
I don't know why that would ever be a thing, but uh, he's decided to make that uh, a thing that he's just going to publicly trash his own quarterback. Um, it just seems like a team that nobody likes anybody. And you just take gut punch after gut punch. You know, you come out, and again, it's the same thing with the Vikings. They come out strong. They come out hot. We're going to win. We got this. We're, we're back on track. We got Daniil back. We got all these guys back. You don't know what's coming. You, you stupid Packer fans, blah, 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 blah. You lose to the Bengals. That was a massive embarrassment. And then Arizona rolls around, and what happens? Not only do you lose, but in completely humiliating fashion with a missed chip shot field goal again. And that just adds to all of it. I mean, it's not just a loss. It's not like, you know, Arizona just came back and, you know, they it was 10 seconds left on the clock and it's, you know, one yard to go and they run the ball and get a touchdown. It's like, oh, shucks. This is, this is a sore subject for the Vikings. Missing chip shot field goals, struggling with kickers and all that, it's a sore subject, similar to the Bears. And that's how you lose. You had the game won, and, and, and he just missed and you lost. And so now you're rolling into the season 0-2. And to be honest, as skeptical as I am of the Cardinals, and I know I'm relatively alone in that, you might have gone through some of the easier parts of your schedule. You got the Seahawks next week. Browns after that are not going to be easy. Lions might be. Panthers, I have no idea. But, I mean, it, it, if you're going to lose to the—and and that's the other thing. You, you was close in the Bengals game, too. That was a three-point game. This is a one-point game. If you play Seattle and, and lose and the Browns and lose, I mean, it's—even if you go on a win streak and beat the Lions and Panthers or whatever, you start in the season— 0-4, that's hard to overcome. And I, I think it's extremely likely that best case scenario, you split between these games. And so you're getting a 1-3 a, a start between the Panthers and the Cowboys. You know, even if you gift the Lions, that's a win. Okay, fine. Panthers, Cowboys, that might be a split at this point. Ravens, that's probably a loss. Chargers, I don't know. Packers, we'll see if they're any good at football. 49ers, likely a loss. Lions, sure, I'll give you that one. Uh, Steelers, I don't know. What are you going to do with that defense? Bears, I honestly don't know who's better between the Vikings and Bears right now. Rams, give me a break. Packers again, Bears again. I mean, there's not a lot of wins here at this point. And it, listen, it's still early. And e- it, they could easily be 2-0 and if they had just, you know, a couple things had fallen in, in their direction. But the demeanor in the locker room is going to matter. It really is. And again, there might be two more losses coming. And that's going to be unbelievably demoralizing if that's the case. Ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard in your entire life of test driving a phone network? Well, now you have, because U.S. Cellular is going to let you test drive their network for free for 30 days. So anywhere you go where you got some dead spots, where your service isn't super strong, you're trying to listen to the podcast and it drops out when you go here because you got no internet service anymore, real simple. Just whip out your phone, do a little beep boop bop boop, that's you pushing the buttons to go to the right place, and you can get the app and try it out for yourself. So go ahead and test drive U.S. Cellular's award-winning network free for 30 days. That's U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply. Awards based on open signal independent data. So go to uscellular.com for all the details. I want to tell you guys real quick about our new sponsor, Factor. Factor makes delicious, ready-to-eat meals, and they get sent right to your door. They have 35 different options every single week that you can choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. There's no prep work. There's no messing up six different bowls, mixing stuff. Factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat. No prep, no cook, no cleanup. Factor is also very flexible with your schedule. You can get as much or as little as you need by choosing between 6 to 18 meals per week. You can also pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved. So head to factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 and use code packdaddy50 to get 50% off. That's code packdaddy50 at factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 to get 50% off. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. 
Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. Anyways, I don't have a ton more uh, to talk about, so I don't know if I want to go to break. I think the, the larger point here, though, is... Um, Again, everything kind of just fell to the middle. Um, it wasn't as extreme. It wasn't as silly as week one, where you look at certain things and you think, man, maybe the Bengals really are a good team. You know, it's just, come on. And again, improvement, sure. Maybe they'll, they'll have a better record, fine. But some of this is kind of silly. You know, even even the Bears, you know, they got their win, of course. Uh, Saints, man, just super dominant team. Give me a break. Now, are they going to lose 26-7 to every week? Of course not. Are they going to never win games again? Of course not. Not saying they're that bad, but the idea that that team that had been completely decimated by injuries and salary cap cuts and lost their Hall of Fame quarterback and all these other things that they lost, they don't have their starting wide receiver. I mean, they're, they're you know, premier wide receiver. All, all these different things that are just a lot worse than last year. We're supposed to believe that they're just, what, dominant? Come on. Jameis suddenly, because he got eye surgery, is some kind of a freak quarterback? <laughs> okay. Okay. There's a lot of silliness, and uh, we're still trying to balance things out a little bit, and there's still going to be some some figuring of things out as the season goes on. A lot of teams still haven't hit their stride. Some teams, like, the you know, obviously the Raiders are going to come back down to earth. They're not going to finish undefeated by the end of the season, but the... the the biggest question, though, obviously not just for all of us, but the, the one that's still hanging out there for the NFL in general is the Green Bay Packers. What the heck are the Green Bay Packers? And I have a lot of people asking me. I, you know, I'm working with Prediction Strike, and they sent me a couple questions for some articles they're doing. And you know, obviously the the question that's hanging out there, and even people that I meet that know that I do a podcast, that the the question they want to know is what's going on with the Packers? Are they going to be okay? I have no idea. I have I have no way of knowing the answer to that question. Here here's the only thing I'll say. If we're just going to go based on what makes sense, the odds that this team completely falls off a cliff and just goes from one of the best teams in football, in fact, PFF had them graded as the best team in football overall by the end of the year last year, that team is suddenly going to be trash. It's almost zero. I mean, it's, it's, it's nearly impossible because they're not the Saints. The same MVP quarterback, the same running back, um, largely the same offensive line. And again, a lot of people wanted it. Well, this is what happens when you lose Lindsley. Again, that wasn't a problem last week. Our center was was like the fifth best center in football last week. He was not an issue. Many of the guys that were an issue were here last year as well, so there's every reason to believe they can perform better than they did. Still got Aaron Jones. Still got A.J. Dillon. Still got Devontae Adams. Still got Alan Lazard and MVS. Added Randall Cobb and Amari. We'll see if that adds to it, but it certainly doesn't detract from anything. Still got Jair. He still looks solid. Zedarius is out. That sucks. Rashawn looked good last week. Kenny looked good last week. Great start for him. Still got Savage. Still got Amos. Stokes is an, is another dynamic. Regression is a very real possibility, and Aaron Rodgers is the biggest question here. But he's still an unbelievably talented, both physically and mentally gifted. He's still in a very quarterback-friendly system, running a very successful NFL scheme. And so while I can't guarantee victory over the Lions, and I can't guarantee 13-14 wins this season, I can't rationally... I can emotionally come to the point where I say this is going to be a trash team. I can't rationally come to that point. There's nothing rational in that statement. It's possible. It's not rational, right? Like winning the lottery, if you want to look at it from the other standpoint. I can absolutely have an emotional argument for why I should play the lottery. I can get excited about it and think about how how much it'll change my life and how how little it's going to actually hurt. You know, I mean, it's it's a couple bucks, dude. Like, you wouldn't pay like one dollar to to get a lottery ticket to potentially win a hundred million dollars, five hundred million, or seven hundred or a billion. And of course, it's possible that you win, but there's no rational reason to believe that you actually will. Now, that's obviously a much more extreme example than the Packers, but. Uh, again, that's all I can do. That's the best I can do is look at the information in front of me and say, okay, they're going to be bad. Make a case for it. What's the case? I don't know what it is. I really don't. Even if you want to say, well, Rodgers is going to be terrible. All right. 
terrible is still a stretch, and it, we're getting into irrational territory. But let's just say he's checked out. He's retired. He uh, he's he got a taste of retirement. He really loves it, and he wants to give it his best. He really does, but he can't get vacation mode out of his head. He's checked out. He's trying not to be, but he just he can't help it. And um, distractions and all these. Let's just say that's the thing. All right, fine. First of all, he's not going to be as bad as he was in week one. Nobody is that bad every single week. The worst quarterbacks in football are not that bad every week. Aaron Rodgers certainly isn't going to be that bad every week. Even a checked out Aaron Rodgers. Beyond that, even if Aaron Rodgers wasn't our quarterback and Jordan Love was, you would expect better performance than that. Because it wasn't just him. The offensive line is going to improve. The wide receivers are going to improve. The defense probably is going to improve. By the way, that's probably your best argument if you wanted to make one. This defense is pathetic. We hired a terrible defensive coordinator, and this is just not going to go anywhere. But again, even that is so... It's possible. It's not super rational. Just based on, you know, statistics. What, what are the odds? Go, go out and find the amount of times you hire a new defensive coordinator and you go from the defense you had to the worst in football by a mile. I mean, literally... 32nd uh, ranked offense, 30th ranked defense is, is the Green Bay Packers right now. That's bad, but the odds that they stay there are, are basically zero. So, so the point is, we're at a point of saying, I have zero information about what this team is. This gives me a bad feeling that it's not going to be a very good year, but I have no idea. Because the point is, we know Rodgers is going to be better. We know the offensive line is going to be better. We know the wide receivers and the running backs are going to be better. We know the defense is going to be better. We just don't know how much better. Okay, so we know nothing. That's the point. We know nothing. Because once those things click... Maybe they click in a way that's much worse than last year, and they're an 8-9 win team. Maybe it clicks in a way that's just as good as last year, and they win the next 12-13, you know? I, I, I hate being in this position because what I like to do is give information. The problem is I don't have any. There's no data to work with that matters right now. I can't explain why they got beat so bad last week other than to say we see this about once a year. This was a bad one. And again, I you know I don't want to give the same speech again about how the coach doesn't have these guys ready and all that, and they just weren't ready. But but again, that's we're, we're past that. The question is, are they going to show up ready today? And if they do, what does that look like? What does that look like in 2021? What is what does this team running at full gear look like? We know what they look like at their worst, and it's about as bad as we've ever seen. What does it look like when they're at their best? Are we going to see that today? I don't know. I know no things. And the fact of the matter is, we might not have a good sense of what this team really is until halfway through the season or, or beyond that. And even then, how many times at the end of the season do we talk about how certain things are starting? You know, again, Adrian Amos and Darnell Savage were bad the first half of the year. The first half before they started to get into the rhythm with a new defensive backs coach. Kenny Clark didn't kick in until the second half of the year. Rashawn Gary didn't pick up until the last quarter of the year. But, you know, at the end of the day, there's a couple things that are, that are absolutely true. Number one, these games count. And if you go 0-2, you're 0-2, and there's no going back on it because, well, that was a fluke thing. It's not a fluke. It counts. Number two, just like what I said with the, uh, the Minnesota Vikings, it's going to take a toll mentally, especially for a team that seemingly is not super mentally tough. When things go bad, they tend to collapse. That happens on the field, and I tend to think it'll happen off the field as well. There doesn't seem to be a lot of resilience with this team. And if they fall to 0-2 especially going to be at home on Monday Night Football for the whole world to see against a division rival, against a team that everyone acknowledges is really bad at football after just getting dismantled by the Saints who just got dismantled dismantled this week. It's going to start to take a toll. And then on top of that, you're going to have your own, not only just your own doubts, you're going to have a downturn in how you feel about the, uh, the locker room and the guys in the locker room. You're going to have a downturn in how you feel about your coaching staff and how much you trust them and their ability to get things done. Um, and you're going to get completely assaulted by the fans. You're going to get assaulted by the media. And there's no escaping it. So, you know, uh, for a lot of reasons, they just got to get back on track this week. And I don't, even, I don't even necessarily know what that means because the Lions always play us kind of close. So uh, on some level, it's just about get the win. But on another level, there does need to be an emphasis on we need to win somewhat convincingly here. This can't be like, uh, what was it, 2019 when, uh, you know, we won with zero seconds on the clock twice? Because that doesn't feel good. You know, there, I don't know. I guess I won't be picky. After last week, just just go out and get the win. But um, 
again, I, I do want, I want them to feel good about this year too. I need there to be some kind of energy. I need there to be something. And if this team is 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 competent, right? Like Buffalo had a bounce back game, thirty five nothing. Tampa Bay is a really good team going up against a not really good team. What happened? They smoked them. It wasn't down to the wire. It seemed like it was going to be for a second, but then they pulled away and 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 annihilated them. Good teams generally are going to uh, trounce bad teams. Not always, but generally. And again, we we can go through the list. We can go through it. Their defensive line is not good. Their linebackers are not good. Their corners are not good. Their safeties are not good. There's no obstacles in your way. Go out and and succeed. You want to run the ball? Run the ball. You want to run it with Dylan? You want to run it with Aaron Jones? I don't care. You should be able to do it with relative ease. You want to throw the ball? Throw it. Devontae should have no problems. Aaron Rodgers should have no problems. Alan Lazard and MVS should have no problems. Anything you you put down in your game plan that you want to do, go do it, and you should have success. And if not, that sucks. Because they don't have a lot of good players. The offensive line has some good players, but they've got some bad players. We should have success getting pressure on the quarterback. That's not a question this week. With Kenny Clark and Rashawn Gary and Preston Smith, that's more than enough to be able to generate pressure. There needs to be pressure. And not just one guy spooks him and he takes off and runs for 45 yards or, or scrambles to his side and throws it for 45 yards. I, none of those are acceptable. I'm talking about smash his face into the dirt. Our corners should have success against one of the worst wide receiver groups in football. Yes, TJ Hawkinson against our linebackers is in their favor massively. But that's it. That's the only thing. And if you, if you start talking about Savage and Amos being put on them, it sort of balances it out a little bit. The fact that we can allocate a lot of resources to the one good player on their team. Well, of course, Jamal Williams. Pardon me. I mean, uh, again, I'll take a win. One and one, back on track, ready to rock and roll. But but is there any reason at all why the Packers shouldn't win by 15, 20 points? I'm just asking. I, I'll take the win. I don't care. We can win by three. But why not? What's the obstacle? I'm just curious. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> I'm just lost in the world. We'll see how it goes. I, you know, again, I'll, I'll take a win, but I'm also just, I'm, I'm just frustrated with the close games, especially against bad teams. I'm, I'm frustrated watching a team that I want, you know, I want to tell everybody the Packers are so good. They're so dominant. They're really good. And I want to tell everybody the Lions are trash and everybody knows it. Okay. But when you go on the field and you can't get first downs and they're able to move the ball against our defense, I'm lying whenever I say those things. <sighs> so I don't know. We'll see how it goes, man. We need to see better, especially, well, I don't know, especially from everybody. But I'm, I'm just, you can, you can tell the difference in this podcast compared to when we played the Saints. I was so confident. I was so excited. I was ready for a great year. I'm, I'm preparing for the worst right now. <laughs> and it's Sunday night for me. So tomorrow I'm going to be a basket case. I really am. But anyways, I got to get going. You folks have yourselves a fantastic day. I will talk to you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye-bye. <laughs>